On that one, and somebody's got a question. Okay, let me see. Somebody chatted to me. Want to ask about obtaining a security clearance. And just got my security plus, and I have two years help desk experience plus a bachelor's degree and would like to move to D.C. to work cyber, but so many clearance re prereqs. Any tips or course? Okay, yeah, I have some tips. If you want a course on it, but I'm going to tell you something you probably don't probably won't need this course but if you want to go deep on it this one right here is what I would recommend this one right here resume marketing for cybersecurity I'm most proud of this one right here because this one helped me get jobs nonstop this right here how to market myself and this can help anyone so this one breaks down what the tips and tricks that I have used to continuously get me employment and get me upwards of six figures. And then if you want to go deeper, it depends on how much you know and how much skills you have and stuff like that. But it sounds like you have a bachelor's degree and stuff. This is the, this would be like your next step. I would I would probably get a combination of these two, but this one probably would be best for. But I can give you some information right now. So you said want to ask about obtaining a security clearance. Okay, I'll tell you what I know and my experience with it. And you just got your security plus. That's awesome. You have two years of help desk experience. That's awesome. That's that's the right path. And uh, you have a bachelor's degree. That's awesome. You're ready. I think you're you're ready to crack that door open. So, yeah, you're on track. Okay, security clearance though. Security clearance gives you an upper echelon. Like it gives you more money. However. One thing I would tell you about is that the security clearance requires you to be eligible to get a security clearance. Okay, if we're talking about secret clearance or TS clearance in the U.S., then you need to be eligible, which means you need to be a, a U.S. citizen, number one. If you're a U.S. citizen, you can get a clearance, and I would recommend you go to a site called usajobs.com, I think, has a lot of clearance jobs. Another one is dice.com. I hope you got a pen, pen ready. USAjobs.com has a bunch of federal jobs in D.C. Uh, D.C. has the most jobs, by the way. That whole area, D.C. V.A. You won't have a trial. You won't will not have a problem getting a job there unless you can't get a clearance. Like if you can't get a clearance, you but you already have a security plus, a bachelor's degree, and you got two year experience, so you can find a job. I'm not saying you can't get a job. That is solid. You got a good solid beginning foundation, right? You you checked a lot of boxes there. That clearance one, no, put you in another bracket, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yes. So, like I was saying, the main prerequisite for that clearance is to have a, is to be an American citizen. If you are not an American citizen, however, you can get a, another clearance called a public trust clearance. And some jobs require you to have a public trust clearance. Getting into cybersecurity for you, though, even without the clearance, without your public trust, without your TS, SEI, whatever clearances, you can still get a job in, in D.C. and V.A. And like I said, this course right here breaks down exactly the skills that I use and the stuff that I use to this day get job offers. Now, it's a little bit slow right now due to COVID-19. I'm not getting this. I used to get like something like three or four different opportunities, job opportunities per day. You know, sometimes like a floodgate, I can't even handle them all. I'm getting calls. People are emailing me on two different email accounts. I'm getting messages on LinkedIn. I'm getting like, it's just a flood of stuff. But right now it's kind of simmered down. I still get calls. I still get emails, just not as many. So I hope that helps you. And um, good luck to you. Like, good luck. You, you're really on the right track. I'm super happy that you have all those things because you'd be surprised how many people don't. And they're asking me if, how they can get into cybersecurity. The thing is, you have to have exactly what you have to get into it. You have it. So that's great. Now, you should know that there's a lot of different aspects of cybersecurity. It's not a monolith. It's a category. It's, it's a category with many different subcategories. Like, you've got, just to give you a couple... Risk management framework, which is what I do, right? Which is like documentation, making sure that the organization have a security policy, making sure that the people in the organization are doing the security policy, making sure that 
uh, systems have uh, security controls. That's one. You got firewall administrator, right? Which administers firewalls. You've got, and then in the firewall genre, the subcategory, you've got Palo Alto firewalls. You got Cisco firewalls. You got ASA firewalls. You got all these different firewalls and stuff. So another subcategory would be forensics. Another one would be uh, cybersecurity risk analyst. Another one would be cybersecurity analyst. I would say just get in it anywhere you can get that focuses on security, anything right now, just to get start gathering the experience, right? And you can do it. Like if you're trying to move to VA, like you you are checking every box here, man. I'm telling you. Okay. Anyway, let's move on here. And if you buy that course, by the way, before I move on, if you buy that course, I will help you one on one. One of the you know limited time offer. If once this gets bigger, and if you're if somebody's watching this three years from now, I don't know how many people that will be on my site, so I can't promise you that I can do this three years from now. But right now, I don't have that many people on there, so I, I'm I can help people individually.